The atmosphere in the Galactic Council chamber was charged with anticipation as species from across the stars gathered for the annual summit. It was humanity's first time at the Council, a significant step since their induction into the interstellar community. Captain Jack Miles, appointed as Earth's representative, stood amidst the murmur of alien dialects, his uniform crisply aligned, representing not just Earth, but all of humanity's hope for integration and cooperation. As the Council commenced, the Qatari delegation, known for their military might and technological prowess, commanded an immediate presence. Their leader, a tall figure with gleaming scales, surveyed the room with a haughty gaze. When his eyes settled on Captain Miles, a slight, dismissive smirk formed on his lips. The moment to address the council arrived and the Quatari leader rose, his voice resonating through the translators embedded in the chamber. Esteemed members of the Galactic Council, we gather here to share knowledge and ensure our mutual security, he began, his tone smooth and commanding. Yet today we see new faces among us, from a planet called Earth. His words hung in the air, heavy with a condescension that did not require translation. This young race, barely stepping beyond their own moon, claims readiness for the complexities of galactic affairs. Let us all observe and judge whether they bring strength or merely aspirations that exceed their grasp. A ripple of laughter echoed through the chamber, some out of mockery, others out of discomfort. Captain Miles felt the weight of hundreds of skeptical eyes upon him. His heart raced, but his face remained impassive, schooled into neutrality. He waited patiently for the laughter to subside before taking his turn to address the council. Thank you for your warm welcome, Miles began, his voice calm but firm, ensuring each syllable carried across the room. It's true, humanity is young compared to many civilizations here. We don't wield your advanced weaponry, nor do we possess your centuries of spacefaring experience but we bring with us a unique perspective, one forged from our resilient spirit and our commitment to peace and mutual respect. He paused, allowing his words to permeate the chamber, challenging the earlier narrative set by the Quatari. We are eager to learn, to contribute, and to grow alongside each of you. Underestimating us would not only be a misjudgment, but a missed opportunity for all involved. We may be young, but we are tenacious, innovative, and ready to prove our worth. As Miles concluded, a different kind of silence filled the room. It was a thoughtful quiet, reflective and less dismissive. He returned to his seat, aware that the battle for respect and recognition had only just begun. The Quatari leader's eyes narrowed slightly, the only indication that he recognized the challenge laid before him. The session continued with other matters, but the dynamic in the room had subtly shifted. The interactions that followed were tinged with a cautious curiosity rather than outright dismissal. Captain Miles listened, learned, and planned, knowing that actions would soon speak louder than words. The stage was set, not just for diplomacy, but for a demonstration of humanity's hidden strengths, waiting for the right moment to reveal themselves in the theater of the galaxy. Back on Earth, the reaction to Captain Miles's debut at the Galactic Council was mixed. While some praised his composure and eloquence under pressure, others were more skeptical, doubting that mere words could elevate humanity in the eyes of such advanced civilizations. However, the high command of Earth's united forces saw an opportunity in the mockery, a chance to demonstrate Earth's capabilities in a manner that speeches and diplomacy never could. In the secure confines of the United Forces Strategic Command Center, General Harlan Cross reviewed the classified files of Project Phantom, a top-secret initiative involving the USS Shadow, an experimental stealth ship designed to operate undetected by the most advanced sensory technologies known to the galaxy. The ship was Earth's crowning achievement in stealth and espionage, yet it had never been tested in actual field conditions against an alien technology. The General summoned Captain Miles to the command center immediately upon his return from the Galactic Council. Miles, still adjusting to the gravity of Earth after his time in space, felt the urgency of the situation as he was briefed on his next mission. Captain, your words have set the stage, but now we need to show them what we're truly capable of, General Cross explained, his eyes piercing. 
The asterisk USS Shadow asterisk is ready, and so are you. You will take it into Quatari space. Your mission is to gather intelligence on their fleet movements and technological capabilities without being detected. This will provide us with a significant advantage should tensions escalate. Miles understood the gravity of his orders. A successful mission could shift the interstellar balance of power and give Earth a seat at the table as a respected military power. Failure, however, could not only be disastrous for him and his crew, but could also lead to an open conflict with the Quatari, for which Earth was not yet prepared. As preparations for the mission commenced, Miles spent long hours with his crew, handpicked for their skills and discretion. Lieutenant Commander Zhao, his second in command, was an expert in alien technology and stealth operations. Together they drilled the crew on every possible scenario, from silent running and cloaking to emergency evasions. Days turned into nights as the USS Shadow was provisioned and equipped with the latest in defensive tech and surveillance equipment. Before departure, Miles addressed his crew in the hangar bay, his voice resolute. This mission isn't just about gathering intel. It's about proving our worth as equals in the eyes of those who doubt us. We are not the underdogs they think we are. Let's go show them why. Under the cloak of darkness, the USS Shadow lifted off from its secret hangar on the dark side of the moon. Its engines emitted no sound, its form invisible against the backdrop of space. As the ship slipped silently into the vastness of the cosmos, a new chapter in human history began, not with a roar, but with the quiet confidence of the unseen. The journey through space aboard the USS Shadow was as silent as the void outside. Captain Miles and his crew, cloaked in darkness, penetrated the boundary of Quatari space, an invisible line drawn across stars and nebulae. The stealth technology aboard the Shadow was performing beyond expectations, bending light and radar around it to render the ship virtually invisible to all known detection methods. Lieutenant Commander Zhao monitored the sensors continuously, ensuring that their cloaking remained flawless. No anomalies on our scans, Captain. The Quatari don't even know we're here, Zhao reported with a hint of pride in his voice. This mission was their chance to validate years of Earth's research and development, a task they did not take lightly. As they ventured deeper into enemy territory, Captain Miles focused on their primary objective, gather detailed intelligence on the Quatari fleet. This included ship counts, armament capabilities, defensive systems, and any new technologies that could threaten Earth. The data they collected would be crucial for preparing Earth's defenses should diplomatic relations fail. Navigating through Quatari space required more than advanced technology. It demanded precision and patience. Miles instructed the crew to maintain a low profile, minimizing all emissions and communications. Every maneuver was calculated to avoid popular trade routes and heavily patrolled areas. The tension aboard was palpable, each crew member aware that the slightest mistake could lead to discovery and catastrophe. Unexpectedly, the Shadow stumbled upon a Quatari military exercise. From a safe distance, they observed warships maneuvering through asteroid fields, firing at targets with precision lasers that could cut a ship in half effortlessly. Recording all data, Captain. Their fleet is even larger than we anticipated, Zhao whispered, aware that even their voices could somehow break the solemnity of their mission. Captain Miles viewed the exercise with a strategic eye. He noted the formation patterns, the types of ships, and their apparent weaknesses. Zhao, make sure we get detailed scans of their weapon systems. I want to know the range and power of those lasers, he ordered quietly. The opportunity to observe the Quatari fleet firsthand was invaluable. However, their mission took an unexpected turn when they intercepted a transmission detailing a planned strike against a neighboring peaceful system, an aggressive move that could destabilize the entire sector. Miles faced a difficult decision, continue the mission as planned or intervene to warn the potential victims. After a moment of consideration, Miles made his choice. We have a responsibility not just to observe, but to act. Prepare a burst transmission to the endangered system. We'll use a tight beam, minimal power to stay under the radar, he decided. This decision to intervene went beyond their original mission parameters, but Miles believed it was the right thing to do. The crew set to work, 
carefully aligning their communications array to send the warning. The risk of detection increased with every passing second as they prepared the message. Finally, the transmission was sent, a whisper across space, hoping to alert an entire world without alerting the Quatari. With the message sent, the shadow quickly changed course, retreating to the safety of a nearby nebula. As they watched their sensors for any sign of pursuit, Captain Miles felt the weight of their choices. They had ventured into the lion's den, danced under its nose, and now they waited, breath held, to see if the beast had scented them. With the USS Shadow safely nestled within the dense gases of the nebula, Captain Miles and his crew waited anxiously for any signs of Quatari pursuit. The nebula's natural interference provided a temporary haven, its swirling gases helping to mask their energy signatures. Here, they could monitor any reaction to their clandestine warning without immediate threat of detection. Lieutenant Commander Zhao kept his eyes glued to the sensor panels, searching for any indication that their recent transmission had been traced. All clear for now, Captain. It seems we've managed to avoid drawing attention, he reported, his voice a mixture of relief and tension. The success of their mission hung precariously on the balance of stealth and timing, and every moment brought its own set of risks. Captain Miles, however, was already planning their next move. Maintain our position here for now. Monitor all Quatari communications. Any change in their military movements could be crucial to understanding their strategies, he instructed his crew. They needed to gather as much intelligence as possible while they had the advantage of their hidden vantage point. As they lay in wait, reports began to filter through the nebula's static, whispers of a galaxy on edge. The endangered system had received their warning and was mobilizing its defenses, causing a stir among neighboring systems about the unexpected Quatari aggression. This ripple of unrest was exactly what Miles hoped to achieve, not only to save an innocent civilization, but also to bring the Quatari's expansionist policies into the light. Meanwhile, the shadow sensors picked up fragmented dispatches from the Quatari fleet. They were altering their course, possibly as a response to the unexpected resistance. Miles seized this opportunity to gather further data on their armament deployment and fleet coordination. This could give us exactly what we need to expose their strategies to the Galactic Council, Miles mused aloud. The hours turned into days as the crew of the Shadow continued their surveillance. The ship's life support systems were minimized to reduce their energy footprint, and the crew worked in shifts to maintain constant vigilance. The cramped conditions and constant threat of discovery tested their resolve, but the importance of their mission kept their spirits high. During one of his brief rest periods, Captain Miles reviewed the data they had collected. It was more than just military intel. It was a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. He prepared a secure data package to be sent back to Earth, encapsulating all they had learned. This package would travel on a tight beam transmission, minimizing the risk of interception. Prepare the quantum burst transmitter. It's time we shared our findings with command, he ordered. With the data dispatched to Earth, Miles felt a momentary ease of burden, yet the mission was far from over. As they prepared to exit the nebula and continue their reconnaissance, a sudden spike in the sensor readings caught Zhao's attention. Captain, we have incoming, fast movers possibly fighters. Looks like we've been spotted. Instantly, the crew snapped into action, their training taking over. Miles ordered a full power to the engines, the asterisk shadow asterisk stirring within the nebula as it began a high-stakes game of cat and mouse with the Quatari interceptors. Evasive maneuvers, pattern delta. Let's see if we can lose them in this cosmic maze, he commanded, steering the ship deeper into the nebula's treacherous heart. The chase was on, and the USS Shadow danced through the stars, its survival hanging on the skills of its crew and the stealth capabilities that had so far kept them invisible in plain sight. The chase through the nebula was a high-tension ballet of near misses and close calls. Captain Miles kept a steady hand on the controls, weaving the USS Shadow through the dense clouds and pockets of volatile gases that made up the nebula's interior. Behind them, the Quatari fighters probed aggressively, their advanced sensors pinging intermittently in search of the human ship that had eluded them so effectively until now. Lieutenant Commander Zhao was furiously working the countermeasures, 
releasing clouds of metallic chaff and bursts of electromagnetic noise to confuse the enemy's tracking systems. Countermeasures deployed, Captain. It should give us a bit more cover, he said, his voice tense over the sound of alert sirens and the low hum of the ship's overworked engines. Despite their efforts, the Quatari were closing in. Their understanding of the nebula's topography seemed almost as nuanced as the humans, utilizing their knowledge to predict the shadow's potential paths. Miles admired their persistence but was not ready to concede. Zhao, reroute all non-essential power to the engines. We're going to need every bit of speed we can get, he ordered, plotting a course that would take them through a particularly dense cluster of gas and debris, risky but potentially effective in shaking their pursuers. As the shadow darted into the dense cluster, the vibrations from minor collisions with space debris rattled through the hull. The crew held their breath, each member fixed on their duties, the silence punctuated only by the operational sounds of their ship. The risky maneuver paid off, at least temporarily, as the increased interference disrupted the Quatari's sensor locks. With a momentary advantage, Miles pushed the ship to its limits. Let's double back and head towards that magnetic anomaly we passed earlier. If we can reach it, we might be able to use it to scramble their sensors long enough to make a clean escape, he planned aloud, his eyes scanning the stellar maps displayed on the main console. The shadow surged forward, racing against the relentless pursuit of the Quatari fighters. As they neared the anomaly, Zhao prepared the ship's systems to withstand the magnetic forces they were about to endure. All systems are shielded as best as they can be, Captain. But I can't promise everything will hold up, he warned, his hands moving expertly over the controls. Entering the magnetic field, the ship shook violently, a testament to the power of the cosmic forces surrounding them. Instruments flickered, and for a moment the artificial gravity faltered, sending unsecured items floating through the cabin. The Quatari, less prepared for such a maneuver, faltered in their pursuit their ships struggling with the disrupted navigational systems. Seeing their confusion, Miles seized the moment. Now, full thrust, let's get out of their range before they recover, he commanded. The shadow burst forward, propelled by both its engines and the natural magnetic ejection from the anomaly, leaving the Quatari to flounder in their wake. As they emerged from the other side of the magnetic storm, the sensors showed no immediate signs of pursuit. Miles allowed himself a brief sigh of relief, but his mind was already on the next steps. Zhao, set a course for the rendezvous point. We'll need to regroup and reassess. Our presence here is now known and we must be ready for what comes next, he stated, his gaze fixed on the star-studded expanse before them. The shadow continued on its new course, the crew momentarily safe but forever changed by the close encounter. They had survived the ambush, but their mission was far from over, and the stakes had only risen. They were deep in enemy territory, and every star could hide new dangers or new opportunities. After narrowly escaping the magnetic anomaly, the USS Shadow set a course for deeper space, aiming to rendezvous with a remote unmanned supply depot where they could make necessary repairs and reassess their strategy. Captain Miles knew that their incursion into Quatari space was no longer a secret, and the stakes had escalated significantly. As they traveled, Lieutenant Commander Zhao kept a vigilant watch on the sensors, now fine-tuned to pick up any Quatari signals. I've set up passive scans only. We need to see them without them seeing us, Zhao reported, his eyes never leaving the readouts. Captain Miles nodded, his mind racing with potential contingencies. Keep an eye out for any civilian frequencies, too. If the Quatari escalate their plans against the neighboring systems, we need to know immediately. Hours turned into days as the shadow silently coasted through the void. The crew's tension was palpable, a constant undercurrent to their routine. They were far from any established human territories, alone among the stars with only their mission and each other. Suddenly, Zhao's console beeped softly yet urgently. Captain, we've got something. It's a distress signal, weak but close. It's civilian, not Quatari, he announced, turning to Miles for direction. Captain Miles pondered the situation. Investigating could expose them, but it could also provide valuable intelligence on Quatari activities against civilians. Plot a course. 
Let's find out what's happening. Keep us in stealth mode, he decided, aware of the risks, but compelled by the duty to protect innocents when possible. Approaching the source of the distress signal, they discovered a small civilian freighter, apparently disabled and adrift. Its hull bore the marks of Quatari weaponry, a silent witness to the region's rising tensions. Miles ordered his crew to prepare for a cautious approach. We help them, but we stay alert. This could still be a trap, he instructed. The shadow extended its cloaking field to encompass the freighter, effectively rendering both ships invisible. A team was dispatched to provide technical and medical assistance. They quickly learned that the freighter had been ambushed by Quatari raiders, left crippled in space as a warning to others. While the team worked, Zhao's voice crackled over the comm. Captain, multiple contacts incoming. Looks like Quatari, possibly the same group that hit this freighter. Prepare to break cloak on my command. We'll use the element of surprise to our advantage, Miles responded, his voice calm but firm. As the Quatari ships neared, confident in their superior numbers, the shadow decloaked, its weapon systems coming online in a silent but deadly threat display. The Quatari, taken aback by the sudden appearance of the stealth ship, hesitated, a fatal error. Miles gave the order and the shadow unleashed a barrage of non-lethal disabling fire, targeting the raiders' engines and weapon systems. Within minutes, the raiders were adrift, neutralized without a single life lost. Zhao, get these ships on a lock. I want every bit of data they have. Let's see what secrets they're carrying, Miles commanded, turning their attacker's misfortune into an intelligence windfall. The raiders' logs revealed planned strikes on other civilian targets, invaluable information that could save countless lives. With the civilian crew safe and the raiders' threat nullified, Miles ordered a retreat back to the shadows of space. Good work, everyone. Let's get back under cloak and process this data. We've got more lives to save and a mission to complete, he concluded, a sense of cautious optimism permeating the bridge. The shadow vanished once more into the vastness of space, its presence known only to those it chose to reveal itself to, a phantom ship on a mission of silent guardianship and covert warfare in the cold expanse of the galaxy. After their successful encounter with the Quatari raiders, Captain Miles and the crew of the USS Shadow felt a renewed sense of purpose and capability. Their ship was not just a specter in the void, but a force capable of shaping outcomes in their favor. Now armed with detailed data on Quatari movements and tactics against civilian targets, Miles was determined to use this information not just for defense, but as a weapon of revelation and strategic advantage. With the Galactic Council's next assembly approaching, Miles saw an opportunity to expose the Quatari's aggressive policies on a stage where they could not easily retaliate. The plan was bold, deliver the evidence directly to the Council during a session, ensuring that every member species saw the Quatari not as benevolent leaders, but as predators. We're going to need a solid exit strategy, Lieutenant Commander Zhao cautioned as they plotted their course to the Council space station. Showing up unannounced and heavily armed in the middle of a diplomatic assembly could get us labeled as aggressors if we're not careful. Captain Miles nodded, fully aware of the diplomatic tightrope they were about to walk. I plan to request a formal audience under a flag of truce. We'll share our findings transparently. It's a risk, but it's time the galaxy saw the full picture of what's happening out here. As the USS Shadow approached the Council's station, Miles sent ahead a secure message to the assembly, requesting an emergency audience. The response was swift and surprisingly positive. The council was intrigued and concerned enough to grant him a hearing. There was a palpable buzz throughout the station as news of their unexpected arrival spread. In the Grand Hall of the Galactic Council, Captain Miles stood before the gathered representatives, the evidence from the Shadow's missions displayed behind him in stark, undeniable clarity. The images and data logs of the Quatari attacks on civilian ships, the intercepted plans for further aggression, all laid bare. The Quatari delegation reacted with outrage, denying the allegations and accusing Earth of falsifying the data for their own gain. But Miles was prepared. Every piece of data was collected under risks that cost us dearly. We have nothing to gain but peace and security for all, he declared, his voice resonant, steady, and sure. The debate that followed was intense. 
Some species were skeptical, others fearful of the implications of such aggression in their sectors. However, the tide turned as more and more representatives, swayed by the undeniable evidence and Earth's previously underestimated capability for deep space intelligence, began to voice their support for an inquiry into the Qatari actions. As the Council voted to initiate an official investigation, Miles felt a momentary relief. It was a victory, albeit a small and potentially temporary one. But it was also a declaration that humanity was a player on the galactic stage, no longer to be mocked or underestimated. Retreating back to the USS Shadow, Captain Miles and his crew prepared to leave the station. They remained under the cloak, not wanting to provoke any direct confrontations now that their mission was accomplished. Let's head back to Earth, Miles instructed Zhao. It's time to prepare for whatever comes next. The galaxy knows we're here now, and we need to be ready for all possibilities. As the shadow slipped away from the station, the crew felt a collective sense of accomplishment and anticipation. They had shifted the narrative, exposed a threat, and solidified their place among the stars. The journey back to Earth would be long, but it was filled with a newfound respect and determination. The table had been turned, and Earth was ready to meet whatever challenges came next with open eyes and a full heart. The journey back to Earth was marked by a palpable shift in the crew's demeanor. The corridors of the USS Shadow echoed with quiet celebrations and thoughtful conversations about the future. Captain Miles allowed himself a rare moment of satisfaction, knowing that their mission had altered the dynamics of interstellar politics. The Galactic Council's decision to investigate the Qatari, propelled by the evidence they had gathered, was a monumental step forward for humanity. As Earth came into view, a vibrant blue orb suspended in the starlit void. Miles felt a profound connection to the planet that had sent them on this daring mission. The homecoming was unlike any other. They were returning not just as explorers or soldiers, but as harbingers of a new era for human involvement in galactic affairs. Upon landing, the crew of the USS Shadow was met with high-level delegations from various Earth governments and military branches, eager to debrief and understand the implications of their findings. The data collected by the Shadow offered not only a protective edge but also a diplomatic one, providing Earth with leverage in future negotiations and alliances. In the weeks that followed, Captain Miles was invited to speak at several assemblies and councils, sharing their story not as a tale of conflict, but as one of courage and cunning in the face of adversity. Our mission, Miles would say, demonstrated that stealth and intelligence are as powerful as any weapon in the arsenal. We've shown that Earth can protect not only itself, but also contribute to the safety and stability of the galaxy. Meanwhile, the international response was overwhelmingly positive. Former skeptics of the space program now saw the undeniable value of investing in advanced technologies and deep space capabilities. Public interest in space exploration and defense surged, leading to increased funding and the initiation of new projects aimed at further developing Earth's presence in space. But the greatest change was in the perception of humanity among the galactic community. No longer were humans seen as the new, weak race on the cosmic block. The successful deployment of the USS Shadow and the strategic handling of the information they had gathered positioned humans as a resilient and resourceful species, capable of playing a significant role on the galactic stage. As Captain Miles stood before a new class of cadets at the Space Academy, he reflected on the journey and the lessons learned. You are entering a world where humanity is no longer underestimated but respected and sometimes feared. Your actions, like ours, will define the future of human interstellar relations. Remember, the universe respects those who respect themselves while forging alliances based on mutual interest and shared security. The USS Shadow was eventually retired to the Space Museum, where it stood as a symbol of human ingenuity and the spirit of exploration. It served as a reminder of the silent ship that once moved unseen among the stars, shifting the balance of power with nothing but the courage of its crew and the sharpness of their minds. Humanity had indeed laughed last, changing their narrative from laughed at to respected, all under the watchful eyes of the cosmos. As Earth continued to build its place among the stars, 
the USS Shadow's legacy would forever inspire future generations to look up at the sky not with fear, but with ambition and hope.